You know, those of us that served in the military, I'm, I'm Dave Layton, by the way, co-director for Policies, Procedures, and Guidelines. Uh, those of us that are retired or, let me back that up, those of us that have served in the military, uh, you, you know, when a recruiter talked to us, maybe he said something or she said something like, uh, you know, this is a chance to learn a skill and advance your career after you get out of the military. I never thought that I would be a policies, procedures, and guidelines fellow for the rest of my life. Um, I spent a, a number of years as a basic training instructor, but the majority of the time as a basic training instructor and at the NCO Academy and then later at the officer training school as the policy guy, writing regulations and learning how to do that. And so uh, I have been doing that now for a number of years. Ronnie, are the slides working, brother? There we go. <laughs> uh, the uh, policies and procedures and guidelines are, are available online, and I'm going to talk about the online aspect of it in just a minute. Last night, Charles Shelton made a comment that um, sojourners have traditions, and, and uh, we like to honor those traditions. Well, there was a very, very important tradition that Charles didn't mention, and so I thought I would mention it this morning. Again, as the policy guy, I, I feel like it's on me to make sure everybody is aware of this. This is especially important for the green dots. So listen up, green dots. And more importantly, is that the right word? My editor's sitting right. More, more to the point, if you are a male green dot, this is critically important to you. It is. You have not fulfilled your requirements as a green dot unless you've had the opportunity to be kissed by Mike Louisi. <laughs> Mike, stand up, please. All right, I want everybody to know who Mike Louisi is. <laughs> and, and Joel Thompson will attest to this. <laughs> All right. Mike, we love you, brother. We love you. I seek Mike out, Mike out every time we have it because I know I'm going to get a warm hug, a handshake, and a kiss on the cheek. All right. Let me, let me before I get into some of the other things real quick, I want to talk about the YouTube channel. Uh, we have a Sojourners YouTube channel. So if you don't know where it is, you go to YouTube.com and you type in the search line when, when the YouTube comes up. You, you type on the search line, National Evangelism with Sojourners. And a uh, icon with that will come up. And click on that and it will take you to the YouTube channel. When you get to the YouTube channel, you'll see a little button up in the upper part that says subscribe. Please click subscribe. Actually, that's important. I don't think we'll ever reach it, but if you reach a certain threshold, then there's some other things we're allowed to do with the channel in terms of getting it out to people. But the main thing is we want you to be informed about what's going on. All of the videos that we record, the, the speakers and, and different ones, are going to be on the YouTube channel eventually, uh, the honor roll. Uh, our guest speakers, and, and any of you that wanted to do a presentation and wanted it recorded during workshop or even other times, uh, we, can, we can make arrangements for that. Uh, it, also, on, it says subscribe, and there'll be a little bell next to that. If you click on that bell, you can be notified when a new video has been put on there or there's been a change to it. So that remember to do that. Now, I'm not going to test you on that. In fact, I'm going to give you a cheat sheet on that. If you will see Forrest back at the back table, uh, he has a, a stack of step-by-step -step how to get to the YouTube channel and what to do there. Uh, again, this is just how uh, we can keep people informed and, and get the word out, that sort of thing. All right. I want to, I want to talk about our uh, policies, procedures, and guidelines. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, let's see, I have a remote. I'm scared to press a button, Ronnie. There we go. All right. I want to talk about how we develop it. And, and first of all, if you, and you do need uh, the updated version, it is dated November 1st, 2022, so going ahead a little bit here. Um, 
It is available on the website or will be available on the website very soon. So you can go there and download it for your own. But if you want a paper copy now that uh, you want to have a hold of it in your hands, please see Pat and she'll make sure you get one. Some people like a paper copy. Some people are okay with a virtual copy. It, it, either one's fine. But we're going to make it available to you. All right, I want to talk about how we developed the uh, policy manual. It looks a lot different than it did in 2019. Uh, we have uh, changed the, just the way it's organized. And uh, that, that's not any kind of a commentary on how it was organized in the future. It was a, a great deal of work that went into uh, those in the past. And I appreciate David Blair and several of the others that worked on it. Uh, there's, there's a different way of organizing this kind of a document. And, and so uh, I, I, it wasn't my idea. It was just the way you organize these kinds of documents. And so uh, I changed the format, it to, format so that it reflects that. By the way, I, I still uh, uh, have some challenges on speaking and getting words from the back of my brain out my mouth. Some of you say, well, that's just normal. Uh, in, in my case, it's drugs. So uh, you know, hang, in, hang with me on that. I, I've been known to say words backwards and even the wrong words. So hang with me on that. Where was I? Oh, yeah, the format. All right, so, so we, we've organized it. Uh, by uh, a numerical indicator. You have section one, and then you'll have paragraph 1.1. So everything under there flows back. And then we'll go to section two. So look at that, and, and you'll see how we've organized that. Again, it's just a logical flow. Uh, it wasn't my idea to do that necessarily. It's just the way they're done. And I had several folks give me some Excuse me. <laughs> really good. See, that's what happened. Some wonderful input on how to do that. So we did. All right. What I really want to talk about, a couple of things. First of all, it is, listen, it is a myth that we cannot climb ladders. That is just not true. You need to climb a ladder, climb a ladder. Safely, carefully, on the YouTube channel, there is a short video on ladder safety. Picking the right ladder, how to climb a ladder. If you're going to do something questionable, don't record it and put it on Facebook. <laughs> I love Debbie Robertus. Take the camera away from Debbie. I pick on Debbie. Seriously. Uh, don't don't record it. All right, but, but it is it, it is uh, you can't change a light bulb without getting on a ladder. Don't get on a table and chair saying I did not get on a ladder. He didn't tell me not to climb on a table. <laughs> be be safe. Be careful. Uh, the the idea of ten feet has been changed. Also, that's not in there. There was a statement over the years that um, we don't climb on ladders that was on the, um, the old application for request for help. And that's been removed. That was the only statement that ever even addressed ladders other than safety. So be careful. Uh, we do not climb on roofs and do roof work. We don't bounce the way we used to, and, and so we ask people don't climb on roofs. We don't do roof work because people get hurt or worse. So we don't do that. So let a younger person do it. Uh, one of the things that we added, and I want to go through that. Am I on the? There we go. So we get input from everybody. We, we get really good suggestions, and, and I, I mean that. E even the ones that we don't adopt are good suggestions about policies. It, it just goes somewhere else or needs to be mentioned somewhere else. We had a really good uh, suggestion about, as sojourners, we don't need to get involved in the internal workings of congregations. That's not our role. We're there to serve them. We're not their elders. We're not their advisors. And so we, we don't do that. Uh, and it was suggested that we make a statement about that in the policies. Uh, the co-directors discussed it, uh, several different views and looking at it, and we decided it would be really a good thing to put in the uh, team leader training. 
uh, t t rather than put it in policy. We, we were having a hard time figuring out, well, where exactly would that fit in policies and how would we say that? So we didn't do that. So again, the process basically is we get input from several sources, get it from each other as co-directors. We get it from you. Uh, and, and, and certainly we want to know uh, uh, recommendations and we get it from the Burleson elders. Uh, and, and so we look at those. If it's something that we really need to change right now, we will put a change out and we'll get it out to everybody. If it's something that can wait till the next year, uh, then that's what we will do. And then when we meet as co-directors each year, uh, we review recommendations as part of our agenda. And so then all of that's put together. I take a look at it, look at the policies, what's going on with things, and, and, and do some editing and, and uh, rewriting of things. Again, based on recommendations, something's not clear, could be worded better, something like that. Uh, and, and then uh, I, I send the draft to all of our co-directors. We look at it, talk about it. Uh, I make those changes, and I get that to them. We have a final copy. Everybody has agreed upon it. And then we send it to the Burleson elders for their approval and edits and approval. <laughs> and, and then once that's done, uh, Pat gets a copy of it, and we make it available to everybody. So that's kind of the process that we go through. I do not sit up there and, and say, okay, here's what we're going to do. None of us do that. Uh, here, here's, here's what we have been told we need to do. And by the way, policies, procedures, and guidelines are not to restrict you from doing something. They are to enable you to do the mission and to be able to do it safely and more effectively. That, that's the purpose of them. And, and so we get into, we, we, we try not to dictate things. It, it's, it's how can we help you accomplish the mission. So that's what we do. All right, so I just want to touch a little bit now on changes. And, and you may not have it in front of you, so I'm just going to give you an overhead here. Under the Sojourner mission, uh, we added the policy uh, that better aligns the type of sojourns. It, it was a little bit mixed up about the type of sojourns, and, and uh, so we added some clarification. N nothing major on that. Uh, the, the control of sojourner forms, uh, we talked about that uh, again we wanted to add clarity so if you say, as a team leader especially, if you say, well, this form doesn't work very well for me or I get confused by the way this form, uh, who do I talk to about that? And, and so we designated that um, actually Charles Shelton is in charge of all forms. Just see Charles. <laughs> He'll refer you to the person responsible for it. Uh, but yes, Final changes is the responsibility of the co-director for office and finance. Uh, but Ron has forms he owns uh, for sojourning and, and the rest of them. But uh, there's also the uh, steps on how do we revise forms, how does that go into effect. Because we do have to have documentation on things to keep things moving along, and so uh, we, we try to uh, streamline that process. Okay, we made a change about uh, mission funds. This was just an internal change. It had the um, name of the oil company that we receive royalties from. Those of you that don't know it, we do have an oil well on the property or off the property, I think, but they suck the oil out of the ground under our property. And, and so we, we just kind of got away from a name and, and just went oil and gas royalties on that. Uh, we wrote, rewrote the process uh, for application and approval of travel assistance funds. Uh, I'm not going to go into the detail on it because, Forrest, were you going to mention that or was Charles, Charles is going to mention that? Okay. Uh, we did make a significant change to the existing policy on travel funds uh, about the availability and use of travel assistance funds. And, and if you didn't know that that's out there, you can get some assistance on, on traveling if, if uh, you, you feel like you need to. And uh, we've had some uh, funds contributed to us to increase the amount of funds available to help out with accomplishing the Sojourner mission. And Charles is going to go into detail about that and, and what uh, the significant change is. And that change, by the way, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes these goes into effect immediately. Uh, that one will go into effect yesterday. That actually went into effect Sunday. 
when we met with the elders and got their advice on it. And, and so you'll be hearing about travel assistance funds and the availability and the process then uh, to uh, be able to take advantage of that. And also then uh, uh, mission funds change approval amount from 500 to 1,000. Uh, this is just, again, internal, uh, like for Joe needing funds for the camp, things like that. All right, let me move on. Uh, the camp B itself, the use of facilities. Uh, we just took a look at the information and, and put it in a logical sequence so it, it makes sense. And then Appendix B, a summary of uh, co-director responsibilities. And, and uh, with the use of the Internet and, and all of those sorts of things, uh, that falls under Forrest as part of his responsibility, the co-director for uh, education and publicity. And, again, these are, these are internal nuts and bolts stuff uh, that probably it, some of those things you just look over and move on. Okay, just wanted to let you know that's what the major changes were for the uh, policies, procedures, guidelines. But I do want to talk about two. You, you've heard it already that we need co-directors. The process is in there about how to be qualified to be a co-director and how to nominate someone to be a co-director. We need fresh meat. <laughs> uh, seriously, we have, we have some... We have some incredible people as sojourners. I, I, my wife and I, the first year we were sojourners, uh, we sat in the back back there, and I'm sitting there looking out over these folks and hearing folks talk, and I'm thinking, man, what's going on back at the home congregation? Are they even alive right now? Because look at the, the core, the quality of people that are here that are part of those congregations back home. I, I'm, I've just... I had the opportunity to uh, know Paul and Peggy Scott to get to meet them uh, back in the very early 80s. And Paul told me then, he says, you know, when you retire from the service, retire, you need to think about being a sojourner. And I got to know him and the mission, and, and so that's been there all these years. And then when I finally did retire, it was just a natural thing to become a sojourner. I have always, my entire adult life, been impressed with sojourners. And so let's take advantage of the knowledge and skills that you guys and the ladies, because believe me, as a co-director, my wife is 95% of my brain right now, and, and uh, the other 5% doesn't count. So, <laughs> so that's true. <laughs> so any, anyway, seriously, uh, think about, and and you know the scripture that says if somebody desires to be an elder, that it's a good thing? If somebody desires to be a co-director, that's a good thing. It's an opportunity to serve in a way that uh, is, is very rewarding. So uh, if you would like to become qualified to be a co-director, it's not hard. Uh, are you breathing? Um, <laughs> a little bit more than that. But anyway, uh, or, or you look around and say, you know, this person has that ability to lead and, 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 and uh, work with people and those kinds of things, uh, consider nominating them. And even if you were not selected for, like, this batch, uh, we're not going anywhere, Lord willing. Consider and, and you know, match the skill uh, of the person to the particular opening. You've heard how we do it. But look through the co-director uh, nomination and qualification process. That's in there. And then there's another one that I wanted to hit here. Uh, can't be RV, recites, RV sites and buildings and grounds. I am not going to go into detail, but we changed the, the wording and eligibility to stay at Camp B for an extended period of time. Please read the policy and look at that. I'm not going to go into detail about what that means. It, read it, and it's in effect now. If you have questions, see me, and I'll give you an example. You know, if you get here on this day, what does that mean, and all of that. I'll, I'll work with you on that if it's not clear. Some some policies are hard to put on paper, and and try to clarify it. I've covered ladders. I've covered Mike Luizzi. I've covered the YouTube channel. 
Okay. This is a living document. And by that I mean it, it's not etched in stone. If you have a better way, a recommendation, you, you cannot hurt my feelings when it comes to writing something, uh, clarifying something. I, I'm serious. You cannot hurt my feelings. You might make me mad, but you won't hurt my feelings. <laughs> and I'll get over the mad, believe me. I, I tell people I, I had pride of authorship beat out of me in the Air Force years ago. Uh, but seriously, we, we, it's a living document, and it, it's, it's ours to help us do our mission the right way. I'm going to turn it loose now. Thank you very much. Please turn it loose.